Okay, so Albion Online released a new dev talk and they're going to talk about the new weapon lines. The new weapon lines that we have been anticipating for the longest time ever since they dropped that teaser months and months ago. So they're going to talk about the new weapon lines and you know, potentially uh, some changes to the meta when they, when they drop. Hello and welcome to another Albion Online dev talk. Many of you have been eagerly awaiting news about what's coming next for Albion Online. Yes. Well, the time has finally come to start answering that question. In the coming weeks, we will be releasing a series of dev talks, each one focusing on one of the features we're currently working on and how they fit into our long-term plans for Albion Online. So before we go into the topic of the new weapon lines, Robin uh, talked about you know, in the coming weeks that they're going to talk about specific features in the game that they're going to add to make the experience of players, uh, I'm assuming, <laughs> a lot better uh, and how it fits in their long-term plan. I'm really excited about these features because we have seen a lot of quality of life updates, quality of life improvements in the game. And obviously, I'm more excited about the, the weapon line, but hopefully one of the features that he talked about was the auto sell or not auto sell, but repair all sell all in the, the marketplace, which I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm just personally excited about that because it's selling loot in Albion Online is one of the most tedious things to do in the game. Today, we're thrilled to introduce the Shapeshifter staffs, Albion's next. Look at that though. Kudos to the design team of Albion Online. This is really good. This looks really, really Major good. Major weapon line. The You Are What You Wear system is a cornerstone of Albion Online. And one of our goals is to continually expand the system by introducing exciting new items that can be Ooh. incorporated into your builds. In fact, adding new items can have such a significant Ooh. impact on the game's meta that it can feel like the entire game changes with each addition. Yeah, I agree. With additions, it depends on how they actually introduce these weapons and what skills they have it depends on what categories or what instances content they uh they affect i feel like if they do it right we're going to see a very big shift when it comes to uh, the meta in albion online look at this design though i really like this in particular this imp looking thing it's like a baby over here and here is like a full grown imp looks really good for this reason, we want to make sure every item we release brings something new and exciting to the game, and the Shapeshifter staffs certainly do that. For the first time in Albion Online, players will be able to transform into entirely different beings. There you go, you can be furries, guys. So um, Albion Online, uh, in the pre previous update, allowed players to change genders. Now you can change into a furry, so, you know, dreams do come or true. Shapes. This ability offers players equipped with a shapeshifter staff an entirely new level of versatility, as they okay, can switch back and forth between their human and their weapon shape. I think that is very important to, to note as well. You can change from your human form to your uh, furry form. <laughs> We're going to call that furry form um, whenever you like. And you can switch back and forth. It's not just it's, it's not just you switching from human to uh, a furry and staying there until the charge sort of like dies out and then you'll be back to your human form. They're actually using like charges, which is a very cool concept because you get to charge it, use it, switch back, get more charges, use it, consume charges. So it's going to be more of a um, fast paced kind of battles, especially like 1v1s and maybe 2v2s as well. I can't imagine this being like really, really strong in ZVZ though. Uh, Calicat says kudos to the design team, but shape is a weak on titles, really? Kind of like it. Which significantly affects their capabilities. In their human form, shapeshifters are masters of manipulating raw energy which they can okay. use to inflict damage, disrupt enemies, or support their allies. Okay. Whilst doing so, they build up shift charges, 
which are necessary to shift into their weapon's associated shape. So that is actually Each weapon, the thing that I was talking about. It's, it's very interesting because they used uh, the charges. They used the charges. You need to get charges, transform to your furry for counterparts and then use the charges to inflict damage or you know support or whatever and he's going to talk about something that is very interesting to me and i believe is going to change like the majority of uh, the meta builds in in every content bro imagine zvz full of fury furry fights <laughs> not for long dude you don't need to imagine for long it's going to be a reality it comes with a unique shape and each shape possesses its own set of unique abilities. These abilities can be enhanced using previously collected shift charges. In this way, shapeshifters are... Obviously, the best design is this. This eagle-looking falcon thingy, bird thing with long wings. This obviously is like one of the best designs. And um, I'm excited. Encouraged to continuously switch between their forms to maximize their potential on the battlefield. There you go. So he said constantly switch forms. So when you constantly switch forms, that is insane. And let's look at the skills here. Let's look at the abilities. Courage to continue. Look at that. So these are your abilities in your uh, with your uh, thingy, your human form, right? Switch. If you switch to your furry form, it switch actually gives you this way, another skill. Are encouraged to continuously switch between there you go. It gives you another skill, another set of skill. Which is going to be really interesting. You don't have, it looks like it, you don't have access to your R, D, and F abilities. So if you're a furry, you only have access to your Q, W, E abilities, but you cannot use it in conjunction with R, D, and F. And I think this is a very good game design overall. Like fundamentally a very good game design because you don't want to make this new weapon line overpowered in a sense that if you have already an existing armor set and you see a very overpowered skill for your furry form, you can in a way combine that with an overly powered furry form skill already with maybe an overpowered uh, armor set they made it so that you can only use qwe when you're in your furry forms form. at least basing on basing on the skills that we have here maximize their potential on the battlefield as each shape also comes with unique health and armor stats which replace your human stats okay very interesting here let me As rewind. Each shape also comes with unique health and armor stats. Each shape comes with a unique. All right, I don't want to misquote him. As each shape also comes with unique health and armor stats. It comes with a unique health and armor stat. Now let's look at it. Now this player right here is in his human form. Look at that. When he is on his furry form, it actually gives him more health so i wonder how that will translate in like 1v1 battles 2v2 battles specifically because you can sort of like gain more health for a short period of time and then go back and then go get more health max health that is get more max health and how does that affect when it comes to like healing resistances defensives and all that as each shape also comes with unique health and armor stats which replace your human stats Players can use this for switching roles during a fight. That is huge. Being able to switch roles in between fights is actually a very cool concept because now you can be like a tank in your human form and maybe a DPS in your furry form. That will change a lot of play styles, especially in 1v1 and 2v2, I believe. And I'm very curious how it affects the ZVZ because in ZVZ, you almost always want to be your role. You always want to have your role, be your role, and not switch to anything else. Now, if you are a tank, a backline tank maybe, or a support tank, can you now be 
a DPS. If you're a DPS and you're dying and you're going back, can you now turn into more a tanky furry so that you can disengage? That's a very, very interesting uh, concept here. Some shapes are very, very... Look at that, though. Kudos, once again. Kudos to the design team. This is amazing. Imagine being a golem in the game. Fantastic, Brazilian. dude. While others are more deadly but fragile. This system allows for a vast array of build possibilities. Players exactly. can double down on their shape's strength by equipping matching mm -hmm. gear for their human form, or they can choose to go in the opposite direction and pick opposing armor to their weapon's shape. Uh, in 2v2, especially like one shot, you can potentially be like double DPS, high damage, and use um, the shape, your furry form, to deal more damage to the enemy. Or do you want to be like double DPS? And then when you're kiting back, you want to be a tank. It's, it's, it is very interesting. I'm very excited about this, uh, this new change, this new weapon line in this game. And let's, uh, let's let Robin talk, shall we? To their weapon's shape allowing them to switch from damage dealer to tank and vice versa. You That's can look insane. forward to the shapeshifter weapons arriving in Albion's next major content update. And beyond that, expanding... Look at that damage, bro. This was something that I was surprised. Obviously, we don't know how much damage. This is still work in progress. We don't know any details about it. But look at that damage on that imp form. Update. And beyond that, expanding and improving do, 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 the do, 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 do. what you wear system is always a priority on our roadmap. Ooh, look at how beautiful that is. That is insanely beautiful. And one of the things that they did not talk. All right, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Dev talk. We will explore an all new Boom! bro. In our next Dev talk. We will explore an all-new open-world activity that complements the shapeshifter weapons. Wait, what? Explore an all-new open-world activity that complements the shapeshifter weapons. Ah, uh, okay. So there's going to be an all-new, brand-new open-world experience that complements this. This was one of the questions that I had um, when I watched this video. Like, where are we getting the artifacts for these ones? Obviously, there are going to be three weapon lines with no artifacts, but what uh, What about the other four? Uh, where are we going to get the artifacts? So I think uh, Robin has pretty much hinted to where we are going to get it. It's going to be like a new open world experience. Exciting stuff. A lot of new things. A lot of new things in Albion Online. This activity will also introduce additional equipment choices and further enhance the range of options available for designing your builds. Wait, what? The range of will Wait. also introduce additional equipment choices and further enhance the range of options available. Additional equipment choices? Additional equipment choices. So are we looking at new weapon lines and new armor lines available for designing your builds huh. look forward to seeing you there robin's not telling us the entire story here very uh very cliffhangery ending there what does he mean about new equipment does that mean like new equipment items or new Skills on current existing weapons or items? We are going to find that out on the next episode of Albion Online Dev Talk. What's your thoughts? What are your thoughts about this new weapon line? About the, the new open world activity that Robin has hinted to? Let me know what you think. And are you excited? Because I am honestly truly excited about this build or <laughs> truly excited about this new up upcoming update although in the past i have been disappointed with the launches of new new things in the game so the mist when it first launched obviously they had uh, a subpar in my opinion launch of the mist but eventually they built upon 
what they already have and they improved it. Obviously it's not perfect, but it's now really playable for everyone, especially for like higher tiers. But I'm curious to see what the new changes are going to do to the meta. I believe it's going to change it really, really well. And furries, ZBZ furries, this is going to be a thing.